My name is Mauricio Rovalino, and I like to work with pictures. In the last 25 to 30 years, I've picked up the habit of making stuff with glass. I like to melt glass. I've always liked fire. So this is a very healthy way for me to express my happiness. <laughs> it's an old garage that was totally destroyed before I moved in here. It smelled really bad, it had barely any walls, and no power, but it was beautiful. It had big windows, good door. We fixed it up and uh, we like to make art here. A lot of us have made a lot of art in this room. During the studio tour, that's the moment when you get to share with the community who you are, what you do. And I've had a lot of really fun people doing it. I had a great time, it makes you feel really good. And I mean, that's it, you know, you feel really good and you never know, you could get a job out of it. I've had lots of offers. The word sharing is really important because that's why I do it. Okay, I like sharing. I like sharing what I learn. And kids like it, grown-ups like it. So we have a happy relationship. And I've always known that since I was little, I just like to share. You know, I try to show people other stuff, how it's done. You know? The color. It's always the color. That's what people always like, the color. They always. My name is Lynn Danino, and my current art form is uh, tr uh, translating old sweaters into new sweater coats. So I take four or five sweaters and cut them apart and reconfigure them. I spend a lot of time in thrift stores, so I'm inspired by those trips because I find sweaters that have uh, images woven right into them. Or I find really colorful things, things that just spark my imagination. And I seem not to be able to resist colorful, tactile things. My studio would typically look like a pigsty. And when I was working in concrete, it was much worse than it is now. I wouldn't call it a place of inspiration. I would call it a place when you walk into it, you say, oh, when am I ever going to put those door jams on? When am I ever going to finish painting it? How do I think this studio reflects me? Um, for one thing, there are a few pictures in here that uh, professional photographers have taken of me and I like to ham it up, so those pictures are an example of that. And then, um, I'm shy about saying this, but it's the truth, I'm known for having this wild hair that I really have nothing to do with, it's just the way it is. And I think my studio uh, reflects that, it's kind of out of control in here. I have a feeling a lot of artists are just like me. They're working in a space that needs a lot of work, but they'd rather make their art. I'm Dorothy McQuiston. I'm a printmaker. I tell people I'm retired from paid work. <laughs> I've enjoyed being able to work in my studio without the constraints of feeling like I have to earn money from what I produce, and that's very liberating. I'm John McQuiston. I'm a ceramic artist. Well, I taught full-time for 40 years. I thought retirement would be a little more difficult than it was, but it's actually very easy for me. I feel like it's, in many ways, as rewarding or more rewarding than when I was teaching because I'm actually working for myself and I put my own goals first. 
you wouldn't think that a printmaker and a ceramic artist would be able to work in the same building, but when I first saw this, I told Dorothy, I said, that building is too nice to have a potter's wheel in it. But I was getting out of throwing anyway, so, and I like to work in a very clean manner. So it's been very compatible and, and we've really enjoyed it. Well, we met in a ceramics class. Doesn't that sound a little bit pathetic? And we didn't know each other very long and we decided we would uh, get married. And much to everybody's surprise and chagrin, I think. Um, Dorothy's uh, father was a Superior Court judge, uh, so it was uh, interesting. But they eventually uh, let us get married, and we've been married ever since. The way we collaborate the most often is, is bouncing ideas off of each other. A really good example for me is I was working on a book that I was very frustrated with. I showed it to John, and I said, well, what do you think? Am I on the right track here? Does this seemed like a good idea and he said, oh yeah, this is a great idea. I think you should keep working on it, go for it. And I think if he hadn't have said that, I would have quit. And that book ended up winning an award at an exhibit. So uh, we really do help each other. We do work together and we look at each other's work and we comment about it and, and talk about the strengths or the weaknesses. When we get an idea that we're not sure about, it's nice to have a partner to talk to and it goes both ways. And so sometimes I'll come up with a design I'm not sure about and I'll uh, do a tile and we'll fire it and I'm not happy with it. And Dorothy will look at it and say, it's just fine uh, or it's okay or it's good. This particular building just has a wonderful feeling. I don't think we're the only ones that feel this. Uh, we have the studio tour, we have over the weekend, 100 people come in, and every single person just, they walk in and they just, wow, what a wonderful space. It just feels good, it has really wonderful light, it's quiet, you're really separate from everything else, and this is your place you go to work. My name is Yoshiko Yamamoto, and I'm the owner of the Arts and Crafts Press. We make letterpress and printed note cards, and also limited edition prints using linoleum blocks. We actually have the studio in this wonderful old historic building. It was built in 1929 for Telecom Toy Company. So it's a historic building, and it has a beautiful castle-like structure in front. And then it was taken over by Derry Gold. So now if you look around our building, you can see some old remnants of the old tiles that are beautiful. One of the biggest inspiration for me is this town of Tacoma. I love how it's situated close to Mount Rainier. I come from Japan, so we have Mount Fuji, and of course, you know, Mount Fuji is very much like Mount Rainier, so yeah, so being able to see that mountain here is a wonderful inspiration. We use mo both like um, mechanized things as well as hand tools. So from hand tools, I like to use hand carving blocks and linoleum blocks and polymer blocks, all those things. Um, and then for mechanized tools, I have old German presses from 1950s down all the way to 1890s printing presses. Um, so, and we use, we use all of them for different purposes. These presses are so beautiful, and they're not just beautiful, but they're in working condition, or actually perfect condition. We try really hard. It takes a lot of effort to keep these up. I think it's like a little printing museum in a sense, and I love them, <laughs> so. so. <laughs> My name is Michaela Eves. I do painting and illustration and a little bit of graphic design. 
I've always kind of been somebody who drew all the time. When I was like four years old, I got in trouble for drawing on the walls because I wasn't, I kept asking for paper and everyone was very busy talking to everybody else who was there. So I just, I'm a problem solver. So I found a pencil and just, you know, took care of the problem by drawing on the wall. And then I spent a very long time erasing it. I grew up in Montana, out in the woods, so there's already that natural element to it. And I lived in Germany for the first four years of my life, and a lot of that time was spent with my grandparents reading me, like Grimm's fairy tales and all the crazy, horrible German kids' books that they would never publish in America. That's kind of what my first influences in art were. Illustration is taking written word and trying to add another dimension to it through artwork. And so what I try to do is tell the entire story in an art piece without needing a story to go with it. And I try to put little jokes in pieces or let the piece tell a story. Most of the materials I use in my work are traditional watercolor and gouache. However, I do like coming up with weird things that I found on the internet and trying things out. I like finding projects and using different materials just because there is that chance of it going horribly wrong, which I find to be also inspiring in a way. This is the Jet Artist Cooperative. It is the top floor of an old building that used to be, I believe, a jet manufacturing facility. There's about nine of us that share this space and we all each have our own little spot that we work in and we have 24 hour access. When you're working on art, it's very much an individual thing and you forget that there are other people out there and it's really nice to see that other people are kind of putting their heads down and working on things. It kind of helps you realize that you aren't alone when you're doing your work. Two Raven Studios has been in operation for five years now. Right now we have eight employees and we're dealing with over 100 artists. This foundry primarily casts in bronze, although we do work with some artists that cast in aluminum. Artists find us by word of mouth. Once you're a, an established foundry, the artists will find out through other artists who's casting their work and that's how they kind of network and, and find foundries. All through our casting process, the artists are encouraged to come in and either check their uh, wax work to make sure that it's exactly how they want the finished piece to look. We do any alterations at that time, depending on what they want. We also encourage them to come in when metal is done so that they can do a metal check. And once again, that's just to make sure that through the process, nothing has been overlooked. And then, depending on whether we've worked with that client before, we'll have them come in and sit through the patina process where they can really fine tune the final coloring and shading on the piece. Right now, I'm actually involved through the Paid Arts Program, sculpting a series of buoy balls that will be going down on the waterfront near the Esplanade building. I'm capturing a bunch of different local sea life and incorporating them into the buoy balls, and so that'll be coming this fall. So far, Tacoma has had a big glass influence. I think that there's definitely room for other mediums in Tacoma, and I like the fact that we're kind of part of that and hopefully pushing it a little bit more in that direction. I like Tacoma for the working artist. It's, the spaces are more affordable than, say, surrounding cities like Seattle. The city has been really easy to work with. That's part of the reason we're actually in this building, was through working with the Tacoma Arts Commission and. Uh, they assisted in us finding the location. So I think, uh, I think it's continuing to evolve and to grow and there's just more and more opportunities for, for Tacoma-based artists to actually uh, get their work out there.
I'm Lois Yoshida. My medium is sumi, which is the Japanese word for ink. The traditional subject matter in sumi painting is nature-based. Some of my favorite subjects are like mountains, bamboo, landscape type subject matter. Traditional materials we use are referred to as the four treasures, so it gives you an idea how important they are. And they're sumi the ink. We have to grind our ink freshly every time we paint, and so we need a grinding stone, which is called a suzuri. Then the third treasure would be the brush. And then the fourth treasure would be the paper. In semi painting, we're trying to capture the essence of the subject in as few spontaneous strokes as possible. So when I'm working on paintings, I'm trying to express what I feel about the subject as opposed to trying to create some objective or realistic impression of the subject. To get that you know, spirit to come out can be more challenging sometimes than other times. So I will have like many, many versions laid out and they'll be hanging to dry from all different places. It gets pretty busy around here. <laughs> Well, it's a wonderful space, this studio in the Merlino Arts Center building. It's got a wonderful north wall full of windows. So it's just, I think, unique in that because there aren't any other spaces in this building that have that advantage. And then it provides another whole wall that I can use as a gallery so I can hang my paintings. So I love that. And the light hits the painting, so it works out really well. People will inevitably say, that is so much more difficult than it looks. And what I've learned over all these years is that the simpler something looks, the actually the more difficult it is because it had to be condensed down to that level of simplicity. My name's Asia and I'm from Tacoma. I went to school at Tacoma School of the Arts. I am an artist. I'm mostly a painter, but I also like to experiment in sculpture and installation, um, even things like basket making and um, clay work. My work really focuses on images of nature and I find that they're very Northwest specific images of nature. So lots of rain and light and sort of fog and uh, clouded imagery. I feel like my native heritage is part of why I'm so drawn to natural imagery and um, there's sort of a search for order and messages in nature in my work and I think that in some ways that does reflect my, my personal experience as a native individual. 1120 Creative House is a Spaceworks Tacoma project. So they took an empty building and filled it with really wonderful artist studios using palettes um, and really kind of building out the space in a unique way. The great thing about my studio in particular is I have this great view of downtown Tacoma. So I think that's another way that this place in particular really makes me feel connected to the Tacoma community. So I get to see all these amazing buildings from different time periods. Um, sort of watch people walk by and get uh, a real sense of even just the way the weather has changed and the light has been, that's been an important part of the studio for me.